Hello and welcome to K Stop, Fuse's K pop podcast. Hello, guys, this is Jeff Benjamin, and as always, I am joined by the G to my Mr. Mr. Tina Zhu. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of K Stop. Hello, hello. Last week was a really exciting week, I thought. We talked it about was. so many. And we got big great, things. great feedback on it. Yeah. Thank you all for listening once again. Thank <laughs> you guys so much for listening. Yeah, so many good things, so many. Um, great comments. I actually want to dive right into them. Um, let's start. Well, BTS is kind of like the big, still the big hot topic. If you guys didn't see earlier this week, they just broke the record for highest That's charting right. and biggest sales for a K pop album ever Woo! in America with Wings. That's crazy. So That's crazy, major, crazy, crazy. so exciting. You know, I'm very, very proud of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been really cool to watch and see them progress in that way. And they way. got their first win. Oh, they did? I believe so. There we go. I mean, I'm just assuming it's going to be win after win yeah. after win. I mean, they're killing it. So congrats to BTS. So many big things happening. Wanted to give a quick, uh, uh, a particular shout out to, we got um, an awesome comment from, from on Twitter using the K-Stop hashtag. This came from Rashina B, at Rashina B. And she shared her top three songs from Wings are, for now, she said they're live, Jimmy solo song the bts cypher 4 song and the single blood sweat and tears so real quick tina now that we've had a little time to sit with the album (laughs) um what are your i think we should share our top three favorite songs too um i guess in no particular order i love all three of these um i think i mentioned the in the last episode that i like these first two but um stigma reflection and the cypher Nice. You reflect Cypher oh, four. Now that you mention reflection. Okay, that would be I like love number it. four. I love how like how Rat Monster could like take it down and, you know, get a little, you know, softer. Get a, yeah, I love the production on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would probably be number four for me, but I okay. will say I think my top three are um Blood, Sweat and Tears as well. Am I wrong? And uh, begin, which is Jungkook solo. Okay. I think I think I mentioned I like Jungkook a lot. Mentioned the begin, yeah. Yeah, but I have to say too, you know what song I also can't? I, it's not really a song, but the Wings interlude, the song that ends the album. Yeah. I was I love that one too. I think right. it's like so the produ- hot. The production is stellar on this album. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh! And just you know, the more I think about it, it's just like they really, they didn't go off of something like cheesy or corny or no, something you know no, no, gimmicky no. they really just went for something that was trendy something that was like in my opinion from the heart mm-hmm. you know it's, it's very just, mature sounding yeah. but uh, it's still bts exactly like i heard it, i'm like okay this this didn't stray from their aesthetic yeah but took it up a notch no exactly and just the more i listen to it yeah. the more impressed i am with it and yeah I'm it's just... funny because um a friend of mine from college oh. who like sometimes listens to k-stop um just <laughs> oh really you know, like she doesn't follow k-pop but she's a friend of mine so occasionally she'll you know peep an episode here and there oh, and um that. she listened to it and she goes because she likes boy band music like yeah in terms mm. of like in sync 90s boy band music Who doesn't so she, yeah so she listened to it and she said, hey, I listened to the BTS album, actually. And once I got used to being back in the mindset of listening to 90s, not 90s, um, boy band music, I mean, um, she actually really enjoyed it. She thought it was really good. And she doesn't yeah. really listen to K-pop that much. So I think it's always great to hear feedback from non-K-pop listeners. And, right. You know, and it seems to, this album seems to resonate with with people who don't normally listen yeah. to K-pop, which is great. With the larger, you know, I don't think, yeah. They have that I, crossover appeal, at least. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even the song, or even the single, um, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, went, like, top 30 on US iTunes. And, you know, I can only, I would hope that that's kind of people hearing something that they're in, intrigued by mm-hmm. and excited by. I think, you know, you don't get that high simply from just the K-pop fans. So, right. and I was looking at how the numbers broke down. They sold a lot of singles, like mm-hmm. so many singles. like So many. Like 200,000 <laughs> singles or something like that. Yeah. Like crazy amount. So it's really awesome to see. And yeah, I was actually, I was home this weekend and I meant to show BTS to my brothers and completely forgot. But oh, you know no, what? I th- you missed the chance. I know. I know. I think it I, makes a much bigger 
impact if you're there in person I doing know, it versus right. just sending them a link. Because exactly. then you can like really, really give some solid commentary I know. as I, you hover over them. <laughs> I meant to show them black pink. I meant to show oh them gosh. just you know just those, catch them up. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know they're they're kind of they're they're in they like. They're they're open minded, yeah. not nearly as open minded as maybe we are K stop fan right. or K pop fans are. Either. Younger brother? These are my younger brothers, okay. yeah. But um yeah, I will say my dad did catch me watching the very the I O the new I O I music video and he's like, What is that? Who are they? So I think <laughs> but I think he just saw young cute girls. Yeah. And, you know, was intrigued. Right. But anyway, thank you, Rashina B for the um for the uh, the, the awesome comments comment. and congrats yeah. to BTS, congrats to CL too, who also charted on You're the right. Billboard Hot 100. Mm-hmm. K-pop, these Korean stars just—I'm so proud of everyone. Absolutely. CL getting a single on the Hot 100, BTS breaking records on 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 Billboard 200, so awesome. Um, one more comment I wanted to feature is um, last week we also talked about. Um, G Dragon and his, you know, fashion lifestyle line supposedly yes. getting some in in controversy, a little bit of controversy supposedly over misogynist comments. Um, but I thought this was a very poignant point, and I wanted to bring it up that this is at Confused on Twitter, our our longtime supporter, shout out to Confused, who said most international fans like to purposely blow things out of proportion, not because they care, but because they know it'll make someone they don't like look bad. It's just one part. Of about fan wars of Mm K-pop. And I was like, huh, this is a good point. And, and, you know, this is like, it's not even that, you know, because we were even saying like, hey, we really don't think that, you know, it was for those who didn't hear last week's episode, which why haven't you? But real quick catch up is that, you know, he on the tag of one of his fashion items or on the fashion, you know, it says, you know, it says something like, don't, don't tumble dry, don't something don't something but then don't it just bleach, said don't bleach yeah. don't put in the sun but then it said just fuck it just give it to your mother or something and some people were saying that's you know backwards thinking and very based around you know gender and society norms but we were also saying like we don't think he's actually telling you to go throw this at your mom right you know it felt a little you know mischievous kid like you right. know fun in that way um so this is an interesting point because, yeah, it does seem like, you know, sometimes people just kind of bring things up to, right. you know, make someone look bad. And, I, you know, I always thought Big Bang more or less had was doing – could do no wrong in K-pop yeah, fan I think, size. I think GD just honestly thought it was an edgy kind of way to to make us like a, a mundane – you know, wash like washing directions on a clothing tag and make it seem oh, kind of yeah. edgy or funny and you know cool or a way to enhance his brand, right. etc. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. For more on that, listen to last week's episode. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's an interesting point too. Is that you know, like I think a lot of times there, you know. We even talked about this with remember when Chewy had that whole like clothing controversy. Yeah, I do believe that like when you're at the top or when people are hating on you so much, like it's kind oh, of yeah, you're... almost indicative that like right. you know you're yeah. gonna get these haters. And so I say, you yeah, know, your every move is being watched. Yes, so and oftentimes misconstrued. Yeah, um, but yeah. Interesting, interesting comments. But yes. yes, so thank thank you guys as always. He's, a, for the, he's also a big YG fan, so I Yeah. He he would come to the defense of GD. Yes. <laughs> Understandably. Yes. You know, Big Bang supposedly coming back next Yeah. Did you see the latest? I you know? heard that they shot a music video and it's big budget. I know. They, I heard they shot back two with music a, videos. Yeah, double title track comeback. Yeah. I'm not ready. I'm I'm I don't know if I'm ready. I mean, I was even saying this too, you know, I did um shout out to multifaceted ACG uh, Ashley who runs that you know she has a big following she's a mm-hmm. YouTuber she has her own website and everything I did an interview with her about BTS but she actually asked me if I had any predictions for quarter four for the rest of the year for K-pop mm-hmm. and I said you know I'm hearing Big Bang is coming back yeah. I'm excited to see how they do too you know like are Big Bang and those fans going to rise to the occasion and, and you know see what you know, if they can break records, I'm I'm so excited to see. I'm so intrigued. <laughs> Is it? Did they confirm if it's a full EP or album? Because the main album was never right. Released. Well, that's I think every I haven't seen anything officially officially from YG. I'm seeing right. all these reports that right. yeah, this is finally you know that third full length album. Mm-hmm. 
double title tracks, you know, coming big. But this was also announced. I need, last mo- I need spring. more. I need more uh, stuff like "Let's Not Fall in Love." Yeah, that is my shit. I love that one. I need an album just full of that vibe. I love it. Didn't we do? Didn't we write? Didn't we? Join forces, editorial forces, and write ten Big Bang songs that need more love. For yeah, their ten or something like underrated or deep cuts or something like that. And I think we we included we that did one, it right? for um, I believe their anniversary, or it might have been for an earlier. Oh, for the upcoming anniversary. Right. The fact that 2006, right. where their debut was 2006. We did it for 2006 oh, week. Oh, right. Yeah, I think so. And I think yeah. we included that song as like a song that deserves more love because that song is so good, too. I 100% mm-hmm. agree. I want something like that. Yes. You know, Liar and, and, and Bang, Bang, Bang. Those mm-hmm. songs really, or sorry, Loser and Bang, Bang, Bang got really kind of, you know, they really took the cake when it came right. to people paying attention. But that song is so good. Yeah. I so just, I'm with you. I've never been a huge kind of edm like fantastic <laughs> baby like meh, like sounds like blaring everywhere oh, it's really? just like a little bit too crazy for me mm. like kind of the more low-key more sentimental mm. um you know yeah. soft rock ballad type song that's big bang in their like in their prime i think you yeah. know because they, they can pull that I want, off i want more stuff else. like that and i thought yeah. the video was really nice oh so. yeah yeah so we'll see we'll see yeah. what happens if you guys want more big they have bang, two chances to wow me two yeah different videos. seriously or hopefully this album is incredible yeah I, I think they they deserve a good album they deserve to give it to us too a yes good album. <laughs> and if you want more big bang don't miss our 10th anniversary spe- special episode for oh, big right. bang yes. We're giving so much promo. Back in August. <laughs> so much promo in other episodes, this <laughs> this one. But yeah. Um, and quickly, before we get into this week's topic, as you guys know, every week we ask you to vote on your favorite releases of the week. Last week we talked about, of course, BTS. We talked about Pentagon. Um, um, uh, Cube's, Cube's new boy yes. band with um, oh god with Gorilla and then six, ten members, ten not mem- eight, not eight, Tina, <laughs> not what did she? Th- yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. it was eight because I'm stupid. Not, they are not Octagon. <laughs> oh uh, my god! Oh, that'd be a cool name too, Octagon. Octagon, I don't know. Pentagon is probably the best. I don't know. And then <laughs> and then Sech Keys, Chex Keys. Yes, sorry. <laughs> with three words. It's very difficult. And you know. As expected, I think I think BTS obviously took number one. They got seventy one percent of the votes. Coming in with a close, not so far away second was Sex Keys okay. with twenty two percent of the vote, and then you know newbies still doing right. okay for newbies. Pentagon got third with seven percent. So okay. thank you guys for wow. They for got voting. more, they got more votes than some like kind of veteran comebacks and who. Right. Got in with all of 2%. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but yay. Yeah. Of course, expected BTS to kind of win by a landslide. Yes, congrats again to BTS. Yes. But um, but yeah, let's get right. We, we've lots of stuff to catch up on. Yes. But now let's look forward to what's what's new. Um, Tina, who, who do you want to get into first? Can we start with Crush? Your boy Crush. My boy Crush of is course. back with Wonderlust. Yes. Um, his EP, his follow-up EP to um, his, I believe, summer EP, Interlude. I think that was released in the summer. Um, the one with Ua in there. Yeah, I oh, love that one. Yeah, yeah. And that one was a little um, kind of, it was interesting production-wise. He had that <laughs> 9 to 5 sound with Geiko. Oh, right, 9 to um, 5. Ua right. was really nice. Um, yeah, I, I was very pleased with that with that EP <laughs> overall. And then he comes back with Wonderlust, which it's much more minimalist. Um I say minimalist because I love that. It's very, it's heavily instrumental, piano, you know, soulful, ballad. Our lovely coworker, Brooke, who <laughs> shares my love for Crush. Yes. However, she described the album as boring, Ooh. womp womp. So I can understand if people find just kind of piano ballad to be very, mm. um, very s- safe and not nothing <laughs> to get you excited for. But it's very... Sunday coffee, um, rainy day kind of music, yeah. which is very comforting to me. So I love mm. that kind of sound. Um, 
I, I, I like your point about it being comforting because even when I was listening to this song, I kind of knew where it was going, even though right. I never heard it before. Right. It, but it was so familiar and right. comforting in that way because I would be like, OK, you know, like it kind of has that classic progression of like, OK, yeah. and here comes the beat and here comes, you know, this point. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that's never a bad thing that right. like, you know, where you can kind of flow S with the see song. where it's going. It's, there's no surprises. I'm sorry. The name of the single is Fall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it's uh, the EP, I believe, has five tracks. Um, and fall, the video for it, I partic I, I feel like the if it weren't for the video, the song mm -hmm. probably um, wouldn't wow me right away. But I loved the concept of the video. It's very simple. Crush yeah. is a very like s simple guy. Mm -hmm. His like his videos aren't super flashy usually. Yeah. Um, he loves those big open spaces. Yes. Remember the video oh, with yeah. Taeyeon and Oh yeah, he loves song. just walking through <laughs> yes. the city. Yeah, immersed well, in his own thoughts. <laughs> what, where, what, that looked like it was almost Jersey or something. It was Seattle. Or, it was Seattle, which is really interesting because I wonder why he picked Seattle. Maybe uh, like maybe Jay Park was like, "Hey, check out my hood." Um, <laughs> right. Because um, it was cause, gorgeous, though, because Seattle is gorgeous. Yeah. Well, because Crush was in town for um for KCON, if you right. remember, or KCON New York. Mm -hmm. And that's actually Brooke. Uh, that's where Brooke met him. Met him. Yeah. You know, we were doing the and interview then, yeah. together, and Brooke killed it uh, when, when you know, and Crush really liked her. Um, fun fact. She'll, she'll probably Aww. start getting red in the face as we <laughs> talk about this. But apparently, you know, he he, he really liked her. and um, <laughs> Well, she was equally but, as smitten with him yes. by what she told me. <laughs> so. We love it. We love you, Brooke. But um, <laughs> but yeah, may, or maybe it was on his way back. Or something. I I thought it was Jersey just because I saw the trains and stuff. But yeah, you did it, see I that didn't, Seattle. I had no idea. I just read in a comment somewhere. Oh that yeah, it was you, I did see a sign for a Seattle something type okay. of company or something. But yeah, no, it was yeah. gorgeous video. It was like, very. I like that it was very dreary because not only does that fit the general. Weather of Seattle, it mm. fits the theme of the song. Yeah. Um, oh, good call. Oh, right. Nice so connection, it's, Tina. <laughs> killing it's, it. It's very dreary. Um, it's a very dreary song, and he's also the song really encompasses him feeling very, um, like he's he's wandering, searching, really longing for this girl who left mm. his life. So I was reading the <laughs> lyrics, and yeah. it, the lyrics just made me love the song even more. And like I at first I thought fall meant. Um, like he fell for someone mm. or he's falling for someone. But fall, I believe, is referring to the season the because the changing. lyrics are right yeah. saying he, there he had this romance in the summer, but then it abruptly ended in the fall and then time just kind of stopped for him in the fall. Mm. And then the winter was cold. The spring was dreary and lethargic because he didn't want to do anything while the Aww. weather was getting nicer. But he still he was still in like a funk. So it's just hard for him to move on because this girl is just always on his mind. So he's kind of just wandering, searching how to move on with his life yeah. and just walking. And and I think it just really translated well. I thought the whole thing really came together well. Yeah. And really taking that, you know, fall being sort of the symbolic time mm -hmm. of something changing or mm -hmm. something, you know, something evolving or something right, dying. Changes. Even, yeah. You know, like, you know, the nature is dying. The leaves are whittling. Right. You know, this relationship died. And oh, I didn't think like... about it like that. No, that's very true. And oh, it makes sense that you released in the fall. So yeah. there's that aspect. Uh, the Korean title is actually how how are you the literal translation oh, which makes sense since he's wondering how are you without me now i wonder you know what you're doing i still think about you and i miss you <laughs> and i'm just like oh my god crush you're killing me here crush you're crushing me <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the album i don't know if you got a chance to hear but um i think that well the intro track wanderlust mm. is just all instrumental there's no there's no vocals in it um now, and is then crush does he do his own productions too does he work he, on that or he does compose? i believe so i don't know if he does all of it yeah somebody please correct me if i'm wrong i didn't actually check the credits for this album <laughs> my bad but um i wouldn't be surprised if he does do all of it but i do think i do think he has help in the production mm. yeah. um but nice. um what were your other favorite songs on the I really love Wanderlust. I, I, I don't think he's done a lot of just straight instrumental tracks on there. Mm. Um, so I thought it really, 
I thought the album really was really cohesive. Yeah. Um, it sounded like the whole, well, you could just listen to the whole thing straight through and nice. it feels like this, you know, it came from the same album, which is probably what he was going for. I love um, the, um, I love him and the dog on the cover. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm really pleased with this album. I think Good. it really, I think it really, um, encompasses who he is as an artist Mm -hmm. and i like that he didn't go full pop or like heavy on the production this time around whereas on interlude he like you know experimented a little there's some auto tune in there there was more it was more hip-hop heavy definitely this one was just more soulful yeah you know simple Nice. So I really, I don't know. I think, sorry, I was blabbering. I didn't even ask you, you like the song, Jeff. Crash, no, I mean, yeah. I, I, I know you love Crush, too, but I don't yes. know if you prefer him more in, like, the ooh kind of setting or. I think I like both, to be honest. You know, like, you were, you're totally right that, like, the last EP was very experimental. And, you know, this is almost like, you know, like what we were saying before, very comforting. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like home base for Crush, you know? Right. It's, yeah. And this is, like, a good, it's totally a good look for him. And, you know, I, I'm not bored by him, you know, doing something like piano ballad or, you know, right. piano, you know, very, you know, going back to R and B roots, mm-hmm. you know, if anything, I kind of like, I'm like, Oh yeah. Like I, I dig, he's not forgetting where, you know, he kind of, you know, where that really sweet spot is. Right. So exactly. I'm here yeah. for it. 100%. Yeah. I yeah. Dig I'm it. really interested by what, cause I don't know what his core mm. fan base is. Is it more of the Zico Oasis kind of like mm. upbeat, pop r&b crowd or is it this crowd i feel like it's a mixture of both i definitely think it's a mixture of both and i think just kind of this song almost speaks for itself you know like i think korea is really into the ballads of course as Mm -hmm. we know i think you know something about the something anything seasonal right is very you know you almost always on trend right i I saw on his instagram that he screen capped um a ranking or I can't remember yeah. if it was melon or, uh, or something else, but I, it, it did hit number one. Hey. Um, I don't know where it is now, but it is well being well received at least domestically. Yeah, seriously. So, um, I'm excited for him. He's going on tour. I'm trying to figure out if I want to drop the money for his show in New York. Hey, what's it's he going to New York? Cheap. It's not cheap. Uh, November 13th. I feel like for, oh my God. for like for my birthday. Oh, that's right. Oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. So, yeah, um, we'll see. Maybe I'll go. I've never been. It's at stage 48. I've never been there. Oh, I don't know what it's either. like. Yeah. Dean was supposed to perform there, but I think it got moved a bit. Oh, so. God. So it's, so it's like a club. I don't know. <laughs> he moved it to Copa Cabana or some shit. And that was like a like a dance <laughs> venue. Hmm. Well, but we'll I don't see. see I don't see Crush performing at a place like that. So. All right. Well, Crush, we'll let see. us know what you guys think. Are you digging this? This, you know, the R- are you guys R and B fans? Which which mm-hmm. sides of Crush do you like more? Digging the last EP more? Let us know. Let us know. Who's who's next on our list? Let's go with. Let's let's go with um, I O I. I feel like yeah. there's been a lot of talk, a lot of great responses <laughs> in regards to I O I. Yeah. Um, Starting off with none other than our dear listener, What Will Said. Oh, yes. Who um, he, was, <laughs> he was all for this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we love the comment. Um, so Very, very, very is the name of the song. Yes. So very, very, very from their, from their new um, EP, Miss Me. This is actually going to be their final release. Which is crazy because they essentially just came out like yeah. not too long ago. But I mean, they are a temporary ephemeral group right like, they yeah. never said they were staying right exactly you know like if you guys don't know the quick history you know of ioi you know they're created this show you know i didn't realize the show started in january and then you know started from 101 k-pop hopefuls young young females um all to be part of this 11 member group the 11 member group was decided and then you know they're going to stick together for a year and then disband and i'll go back you know they're all trainees they're all you know, some in this time period, some members actually did debut with different girl groups. Some are still waiting. Some, yeah, it was a very interesting it's a very, concept 
yeah, how it all just kind of happened. I've never and, heard anything like that before. Yeah, it's certain. You know, this certainly it's very K-pop, for lack of a better word. You know, it's like this would only happen in the K-pop scene. Basically, it was just but, so planned. They had it, the whole thing laid out. Yeah, it's really inc- you know sometimes it felt like it, it got so messy. intricate, so intricate. And you know, they started. You know, they released an eleven-member single. Then they, you know, some girls actually debuted with different groups right. you know the two girls from jellyfish entertainment debuted mm-hmm. with goo goo don one girl joined um cosmic girls right. the wjsn group um i will say as interesting and ambitious as the whole you know plan was mm-hmm. and is it was very difficult for me to mm. lock into really? ioi mm-hmm. because there was just so much happening. I don't. Yeah. I didn't have the energy to keep up with it. <laughs> right. So I really have no idea who's in the group. I don't know who is whom. <laughs> um, but I, you know, can do nothing more than just watch the video and listen to. <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're uh, well, you easy. see, you know, me on the total other side of the spectrum, I totally bought into this whole, really? con- okay. you know, I think I've been, I, I was sort of, you know, I eventually got really hyped about it all. Maybe it's because of the K-Stop listeners also getting really hyped. Yeah. But I really bought into this idea that, oh my gosh, it's going to be like the super girl group for like, you know, one year only. And I better, you know, really enjoy it. You better it. get on board because yeah. they're only going to be around for this one year. And that's totally what I did. Yeah. So, you know, that's here fair, they are okay. now with their you know they're all back together um you know all 11 members um they were maybe you know they did we didn't discuss it on the show but they seven members released one single in between these last two songs okay. and then here they are now with with very 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 yes. um and quick you know quick overall comment from what will said who wrote if you separate the red velvet inspired visuals from very 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 it's actually a bop ep is solid but what a man will be ioi's opus hashtag case stop thank you what will said a couple okay. things to go through right there but let's get into let's inter let's weave that comment into i agree our, with our about 80 percent of that <laughs> of that assessment yeah so what do you think of the song first and foremost the song first and foremost sounds a lot like G from, That's what from I'm Girls hearing. Generation. I wrote that um, in my review as well. Right. So the overall <laughs> production of it is very similar, but there is actually like an entire bar mm. in that song that sounds exactly like a bar from G. And you can hear it if you I'm gonna have to well, I'm not gonna sing it obviously or hum it, sing but it, um <laughs> But it's like if you look in the YouTube comments for very, very, very people mm. call out that particular part. Is it is it a vocal part? Yes. Oh. It's like I can't because I heard it, this like, really. Da, 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 da. I can't do it. But it's like it's at around like the 45, 50 second oh, mark. Interesting. I think. Um, I... It sounds exactly like it's it's almost like JYP like took that oh, that oh like God. four note section. And yeah. Just, just I heard plopped it into the song. I heard a really good mashup of. G and yeah. very, very, very. Right. But so it's just but goes I to do Peru. like the song. I think it's very catchy. Mm. Um, yeah. I think it's I so think, catchy. Right. I think I wouldn't have liked it if it had come out like, I don't know, maybe five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it took me a very long time to like G because I didn't like that bubble gummy yeah kind of repetitive it was horribly you know, i felt like i was being hypnotized when i first heard g but yeah. now i love g yeah i pre- to be honest i i never really understood it <laughs> like that yeah. whole i remember actually i think g was like tiny bit before my time mm-hmm. and i remember someone showed it to me maybe in 2012 yeah this or 2011 i think this person really liked the dance video right. and i was like i was like this song is not that good <laughs> but right. I, now I That's appreciate I it for like, what it is. I was just like, it's so repetitive. <laughs> what am I watching? Yeah. It just doesn't seem like a song. Like, yeah. But now I actually rock with it. I love now it. Now I get um, it. I totally get yeah. it. And that's kind of how I feel about this, too, is that, you know, I mean, like, it's just filled with, you know, they're totally going for that, you know, Mm -hmm. very hooky, very earwormy. Like, I think I've literally woken up with Somi's, like, no, 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 like, in my head every morning for these last, like, three days. it's so freaking catchy. And it's interesting. I feel like they took an element of like three different girl groups and combine it into one concept and oh. video like the the, the hand motions reminded me of that horribly annoying 
Bo beep, bo beep, bo beep from mm. Tiara. Bo beep, bo beep, bo beep, where they oh, yeah. do that like paw. You're always a Tiara thing. hater. It's a freaking. <laughs> a, they're so annoying. And that Love song Tiara. was just like started it, where they had they had the paws, and they were like, mm. bo beep, bo beep. I'm like, please stop. That's um, where all that started. That's where all that started, and then I, they could never win me back. But <laughs> but no, like this, the vid, what they did in the video IOI, that didn't really bother me, whatever, because uh-huh. um, the song wasn't horrible. <laughs> um, and then, like we said. It reminded us us of Girls' Generation, and then yeah. the the makeup and the aesthetics yeah. reminded a lot of people of Red Velvet, yeah. um, a combination of Dum Dum and Russian Roulette. The makeup, totally. like the doll like makeup, doll like makeup. Yeah. Lots of um, even the athletic kind of yes. looks Tube were very socks, Russian Roulette, yeah. um, and even the um, you know, there's some Pippi Longstocking yeah. hairs, which is what they very Red quirky, Velvet did, playful. On. Yeah, definitely see where you're coming from with that. That's 100%. Right. Um, yeah. How do you I, um, feel about that? Because I know you like Red Velvet. Yeah. I mean, you Does know. Does it bother you that they're. It's, it's slightly bothersome. I kind of wish. I was sort of hoping for something a little more unique, of course. A little bit more original. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, at the same time. You know, I think this group has done a good job at showcasing different sides. You know, Dreamgirls was very bright and cheery. Mm -hmm. What a Man was kind of more powerful, girl crush, as they call it, uh, concept. And this one was, you know, them almost getting, like, quirky, experimental. And, you know, so they've done a good job at showing all the different sides of themselves. But at the same time, you know, I do wish there was something a little more unique about it. You know, even, like, certain things, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's just like the Red Velvet, you know, video. Right. um, I will say what? the hook really saved this. Which one? The the, the hook of um, very very very. Yeah. Or, yeah. Just. Chip, I think chip, chip, if chip, the song weren't so fun, it'd be <laughs> the whole thing would be very forgettable. It would, it would feel very derivative. No, I I 100% agree with that. Um, yeah, and I think you know ultimately I think. I hope it's a big hit for them, you know. Like I said, I'm totally buying into the hype, totally in love with them. I'm right. ready to um ready to um support as as necessary. I but I checked out the rest of the EP. Um mm. I will say it didn't really impress me. I like the second track a lot. Is or, that the one is it Hold of... On? Hold On is the name of the track, but I can't remember if it was one or two. I think it's number two because I think Very, Very, Very is the first song. Yeah. I think that was the one who, who – or I think that is the song that was produced by Jin Young of B184. Oh. And oh, he's so kind of found sense. this really nice sweet spot of producing yeah. for girl groups. He had he did a really good song for IOI called – I think it's something about – called like Picking Cherry Blossoms or okay. When the Cherry Blossoms Fall. Yeah. Really nice. Very synthy and sweeping. Mm-hmm. He did this that great song yeah. for Oh My Girl – Jin Young is like he's killing it. He's and you know obviously he does amazing stuff for B One A Four, who I hope will be back soon. Yeah, so. oh, very consistent group. Yeah, so I'm I'm you know I'm ultimately yeah I'm well, really into well, it. Well, no wonder that's a song I like. It's a song that sounded nothing like the rest of the album. The rest <laughs> of the album was very like boppy and yeah. you know playful, totally and, a bop. Yeah. yeah, I mean I'll I think I like this one more. I don't know what a man the I O I song was very you know fun and i love the salt and pepper and vogue uh you I know didn't reference love it. It, but it didn't hit me as I don't hard know. as i think it should maybe should've. it was the pace of it that i couldn't get yeah. on board with i don't know it was just i think this is a good one for them to end on i think it looks like it's going to be a big hit yeah. it's going to be kind of like one of those inescapable songs you yeah. know i think it's way more memorable than dream girls um You know, I think, I don't know. It's like, I I really, I'm excited to see kind of what happens with this group. Um, You know, Na Young, who's the leader of the group, even wrote, uh, co-wrote one of the songs on the new EP. I'm so excited to see what will happen with them. You know, for all I know, this might be the last we see of some of these girls. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, I'm very curious to see what happens with Somi, who's, you know, the JYP Mm -hmm. trainee, the the face of the group. Um, I'm excited to see what happens with Pledis Girls, which two members oh are in that. God, That'll be Pledis's right, yeah. new girl group. See, um, this, see, I can't keep track of all I this. know, I know. I know I'm just lit- – I just need to spit it out just I'm to real, get I'm it like, out. <laughs> but Tina's just sort of looking at me <laughs> like, like, all yeah, right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, we w- of course, you know, Iowa has been a big hot topic all throughout K-Stop as it started this year. So we want to know true. what you guys think, of course. Hit us up. 
Hashtag K-Stop. Leave a comment on Fuse.tv. I'm at Jeff underscore underscore Benjamin. And I am at Hey underscore Tina with three A's. Yes. Um, and Tina, will you introduce our last song that what we get to? What is our last song? It oh, I remember now. Than Ladies Code. Ladies Code. Um, hmm. Ladies Code comes back with uh, The Rain. And um, this follows their previous single, Galaxy, which Jeff and I both really, really enjoy. And the music video is gorgeous. Um, And they come back with another more kind of melancholy song, but definitely not as melancholy as the Galaxy single, which was the first single following the... um, Love that single. Yes, it was the first single following the tragic car accident that yeah. took the lives of, um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Is it Le- is, is it Rise or is it Lisa? Lisa. I, Cause, saw, it, I cause saw Rise in, in, and in, in, Lisa. In Korean, yeah. it's not pronounced Rise. No, I, I wouldn't so think so. And I don't want to get it incorrect. They would usually but, capitalize the S, and I usually right, say like Lisa. So, but yeah. y'all know who I'm talking about. Um and umbi so they are no longer part of the group um yeah rest in peace but uh yeah so a lot of people were were were, um anticipating their comeback to see how they will move forward as a trio and um i really think they killed it with galaxy they look gorgeous um i love very sophisticated chic yeah and And i think they really took it up a notch Mm -hmm. with this new single the rain yeah the video is even more visually mind-blowing than galaxy was in my Mm -hmm. opinion yeah um i agree there was some really there was some really great choreography but it wasn't like they were trying too hard um what did you think of the song yeah i mean i i i'm with you 100 percent. i i love this i think they it's once again, you know, they, I don't know, it's just like they've clearly like upped the quality. I don't know, like Ladies Code in the past, you know, before kind of the car accident, you know, the, of course, the tragic accident accident and stuff. It felt like they were very trying to chase trends and, you know, right. do something. You know, I always liked them. I, I remember highlighting them as like a group to watch, like, mm-hmm. you know, a little after their, their debut. And, you know, they were going for this funky, brassy sound, but this, it just feels like a whole different world. Yes. And, you know, it's just such, it's high quality music. I mean, I, I loved Galaxy, like we were saying. I think it's one of the best singles. I feel singles. like, despite all that has happened and the tragedy that happened with this group, that at least now they have, this sounds so bad. Like now they have found a sound for themselves that I think really works for them. It's like a loungy melancholy sound. Yeah. Which I mean, kind of, you know, is almost, I I don't want, I don't want to say it's appropriate, but like it almost kind of, you know, it's, it's a, it's very, you know, I could see why this, they, they might be sort of drawn to this, you know, because these, these girls were also in that, that car, you Mm -hmm. know, that same accident that, you know, they were also, you know, they needed, you know, time to recover physically, mentally, you know, psychologically, 100%. Um, So, yeah, I just think, you know, that they're sort of on this really nice progression. And this one, once again, you know, they were doing even more here. There was, like you said, some nice choreography. Mm -hmm. They look very in control, I think, in the video. So many gorgeous uh, visuals. I don't know who the art director was for this project, but... It's incredible. It really There are is. so many incredible moments. Oh um, I could gosh. do without the like flopping goldfish because I don't like looking at fish. Um, but fish abuse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I did feel bad for the fish out of water. But I love all the glass references. Oh, yeah. um, the mirrors. Um, the mm-hmm. sha- things shattering. Yeah. Because um, it is about them trying to move on from a, from a failed relationship. Yeah. So, um, but I feel like throughout the video, you could sense tinges of optimism Mm -hmm. so they're trying to move past that despite despite the rain and i thought the umbrellas were were a huge hit i was just gonna mention the umbrellas i think a lot of people like the umbrellas the fact that there were flowers blooming bright flowers blooming underneath the umbrellas as if like you know shielding it from the rain Mm -hmm. and there's something growing something blooming lots of symbolism there so i loved that i really loved that i I think i I don't think i've ever seen that i've only seen the umbrella where it underneath it's clouds like a blue sky with clouds so it might be raining outside but 
you know, you're, yeah. if you look up, you're Aww. directly seeing you know, <laughs> blue skies, clouds. That's so, adorable. Um, but no, like I would totally buy this umbrella. They need to sell this umbrella and like their amazing. fan cafe or something. But I know. Um, yeah, and you know, even like watching them, you know, it it never feels like, um, um, it never feels like having three members that things are too you know we've talked about you know maybe the future of trios and k-pop it never felt like they were missing anyone or anything was you know down in that way so and they all sound good and like zuni has been killing it (laughs) i feel like ever since she went platinum blonde she's like a whole new person (laughs) she's looking great and like i loved her scene where she fell into the bathtub with all those like electric blue flowers in there yeah I thought that was a really cool moment. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. So, but um, yeah, I like that it's a it's a bit more upbeat. Yeah, a definitely bit more, more loungy upbeat than the last one. Yeah, for but sure. It's hard for me to pick which one I like better because I feel like the last one was maybe more. There was more of a hook with yeah. Galaxy. Right. Yeah. I mean, that one just and I remember that one just kind of blowing my mind because yeah. I wasn't sure what to expect right. or, or what to see. And right. Then, yeah. They just came back. They're coming back so strong. And, you know, I really hope they do kind of get that, you know, recog- they continue to get. They're extremely underrated, I will say. I yeah. was very surprised myself because I never really paid attention to them. And like, yeah, the past two, these past two singles have been incredible yeah so i'm really yeah i think it's just another another huge win for them so yeah what's um so who gets who gets your vote for, well, for obviously top crush yeah <laughs> see uh, now see i, I would have said iowa just because i think it's so fun i can't stop listening to it but then actually talking about and dissecting more of ladies code and you know re- really remembering they get your vote you know i think i just have to give it to them i mean that's fair yeah. i think all three um releases this week are extremely successful and strong in their own respects yeah. so you know i don't i'm very interested in seeing which one <laughs> takes the which one takes take, first yeah because there's no clear winner to me i right don't now. think so well in my mind there is but <laughs> <laughs> i meant in the overall fan base and fandom. <laughs> yes so let us know what you think and now let's get into some charts. Let's do it. If you guys have been listening, which you better have this been. my comeback week. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> we're having a um, an October comeback chart battle um, of sorts where we take a look at the, um, the top five songs on U.S. iTunes. Um, and if one artist that we've selected on our team has a song in the top five, then we get a point. So right now I'm leading three to one against Tina. My The people on Team Jeff include Shiny, IOI, Girls Day, Twice, Monster X, NCT, and Super Junior. These are the people that are announced to supposedly come back. And Tina on Team Tina, she's gotten Ailey, Sandul, Mamamoo, Blackpink, Crush, Sex Keys, Tiara, <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know why I can never. I don't know why. I always forget how to it's pronounce fine. it. And Tiara. Wait, so, who has IOI? I do. Oh, damn it. I know. Maybe it's not my comeback week. Such a smart idea by me. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, like we were even. Well, and we said, you know, no one can get BTS because, like, they'll just continue to do well. But because they've even. They've even charted their old songs. Um, right. So just, Inner Kimchi, yes, at Inner Kimchi on, on Twitter actually said, since BTS can't be chosen, their chart positions to be redacted and the top five reapportioned on K-Stop. So I love that idea. Which so, is, that is a really good idea. Because I'm already seeing <laughs> BTS as two out of the five songs right now. Oh, so God. I'm going to start us off at number seven this week. We're do- we're starting it now. What if it had worked in? What if this method had worked in my favor last well, we week? We didn't get the suggestion until this week. Oh my Tina. god! We if this can- gets you more points. I will not allow it. <laughs> well, spoiler alert: it's gonna make us even. <laughs> oh, okay. Please continue. So- <laughs> Carry so, on. Well, number seven is one of one, shiny, which means that is my point. Okay. So four to one, but the number six is Blackpink's whistle. What? So no. Tina actually continues up up the ladder. So it's four to two right now. Chipping number away. five is BTS Fire. Number four, BTS Save Me. Number three, Blackpink Boombaya. Nice. 
So I'm actually surprised. I thought Whistle was the favorite song of, of Yeah. Wasn't Whistle always ahead of it? And now yeah. Boombaya somehow jumped ahead. Maybe All they're right. just maybe they're kinda over Whistle for the for the moment. <laughs> maybe they're over. So that brings us to what, four to three? Yes. Number two got seven hard carry. Okay. And number one Score another point for Jeff because it's very, very, very I O I. Of course, <laughs> as expected. So five three. Five to three. All so right. that's basically the this is basically the midpoint of everything. Y'all crush fans suck. <laughs> <laughs> I know where is he? Come on, guys. I don't even see him. I don't even want to say fine. where, where you he know, is. I didn't ex- I didn't expect this crush album to you know. Blow the charts. Blow up the charts. <laughs> Blow up the charts. Well, maybe next week, Tina. You never yeah. know. After my endorsement <laughs> or yes. my support of, of so, him. So five to three. Keep supporting us. I think somebody, yeah, somebody, are, we, we've, I've seen some support for Team Tina. No support for Team Jeff yet. So, but. I'm sure uh, your many followers just by default support you. Well, we'll see. <laughs> They're not being very vocal. But in any <laughs> case, show yourself. Show yourselves, guys. But in any case, yes, that was our chart section for the week. But. Still got some time left. We, we still got like a solid. Some time like, left. What, week and a half, two weeks left? Oh, I thought you meant in this episode. I'm no. like, yes, Tina, I guess we for do. For me to make that comeback. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, I think you have at least two weeks. So we'll see. Of course, as you know, the prize is. A bottle of soju. Yes. It was a bottle of wine last time. It's a bottle of soju this time. But, so keep in touch and let us know which team you guys are on. But last but not least, before we wrap up this episode, a very packed episode, um, we talk about in our deep cut section, as we always do, a uh, trending topic or controversy or something happening in the in the K-pop world. Um, this is about, well, our one of our favorites, Beast, yes. who were just announced to not not be renewing their contract with, with their longtime label, Cube Entertainment. And they're instead moving. We think it's. It looks like it they're It looks moving. like this is like 90% happening. Yeah. I think Cube is stalling right now because the latest reports say that they have not finalized this um, right. decision, that they're still in discussion. Mm. But as a, like their contract was supposed to end mid-October and now right. it is past mid-October. Yeah. They just celebrated their seven-year anniversary because yeah. I think that was like October 15th or 16th. Yeah, I heard it was the 16th. Yeah, um, and they have not renewed right. so unless there's some <laughs> weird thing in the contracts they have not renewed yeah and this episode posts uh, October 19th and so as of right now no beast on cube mm-hmm. but the next rumor the step is that they're supposedly going independent and setting up their own yes. label which has n- which is almost unprecedented I think Xinhua did that yes, um, yeah, set up their own a company. few years ago in like 2010 or something like that. Right. Um, but they were, I want to say they were more of a veteran group at that time or an older group maybe. Sure, yeah. So I feel like uh, maybe more that. more years under their belt. Yeah, yeah, maybe they had a more connections or reasons to do, I don't know. But <laughs> for, for, for an idol group who I feel like is still – fairly young and yeah. would have a few more years um in the traditional sense in the yeah. traditional sense that you would think they would this comes as a bit of a shock at yeah. least to me it comes as a shock to you a little bit because i almost well, feel at like least to to set up the own hmm. the own agency that yeah. i feel like is very ambitious oh okay that part instead right. of maybe signing with another label another label or something like right. that okay i see what you're saying because in my opinion it sort of seems like, and the kind of what I've been reading about from, you know, whether that's four minute fans or mm-hmm. Cube fans in general or the people on K Stop who have hit us up with comments that, yeah, Cube is, is kind of struggling right now. Yeah, I feel like that has been coming up in a few of our episodes, yes, whether it's, it's about. A theme. Whether it's about Hyanna leaving yeah. or, you know, four minute when yeah. back when. They could have re-signed, but then we brought it up again later when they didn't re-sign. Um, so right now I feel like they're probably going to put all their money into Pentagon Pentagon. and 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 B2B and B2B. And who else is on there right now? Uh, CLC. 
the new girl group. Yeah, I don't. Tina know. Tina looks very I'm just confused. Like, I don't know what yeah. that is. Um, yeah, I mean, Cube is that. That's not a. It's not a good sign if kind of your veteran yeah. group who kind of probably was making a majority of the money for you is, yeah. is not there. So and you know, I Hana. it I I checked the charts and it seems like uh Hi- was highlight the name of their latest album it's highlight right i think so yeah the one with ribbon on it yeah. which was very underwhelming for me uh, but the album itself went number one in korea like by oh, physical yeah. sales count no i mean they which def- surprised me right right no they totally still have that supportive fan base yes. and you know that that is going to you know most importantly buy those albums they may not be topping the charts with you know their singles but i don't think the single performed that badly either yeah um you know cube or sorry uh, beast i think knows they still have something and they still have this mm-hmm. fan base that will support them right and so it almost in my opinion makes sense that they would go independent mm-hmm. because i think you know we i think talked about this too a little bit too is that it felt like cube was kind of keeping them very much in this comfort zone of you know do the ballads do the you know do sort of the slower tempo stuff we know this will work keep it there you know Beast which is prob- interesting because when they first debuted it was not like that <laughs> right well you're right so you know it almost seems like if anything, they probably know themselves best. And they're yeah. like, we think there's so much more potential for it. You know, I, I can see this mindset that, you know, these guys have stuck together. You know, as we know, they lost Young Sung earlier mm-hmm. this year. Clearly, these five are in it to win it together. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're staying together. So I think that it's very interesting that they want to go independent because... I think they just see the potential. I think if any, if, you know, if Shinwa was kind of scared maybe to go totally independent, you know, kind of, I think that was around 2012 when they came back. This was before kind of, you know, Gangnam Style and all this stuff kind of blew things up in larger proportions. You know, Beast, I think, kind of sees, okay, K-pop, it's still a th- very much a thing, you know. It's very, you know, we have, you know, big fan base in Japan, big face in Korea, big right. fan base, you know, elsewhere. I think we, if anything, it felt like now is the time to do it right. rather than stick with Cube another three years right. and then try to right. go independent. I just didn't even think this was an option. Really? I didn't think they would even, cons- I, I, it just never crossed my mind that they would do this. I thought the options were resign, um stop being artists or sign with a different label so i think it's really cool that they're doing this i'm also a little bit scared because it is risky of course but you know if anything you know what's kind of in my opinion cool or very comforting about this is that you know a lot of people were saying you know this is what four minute should have done but you know four minute doesn't produce and compose their own music right you know if anything if they had set up their own company they'd also have to set up producers and people with them and right. that probably is a risk to a lot of you know the right. hit makers and you know they're another they know they're going to get paid by cube right. but you know a totally new company at the very least beast knows that they you know have these skills you know their members have been producing and composing their music right. all for a pretty much a long time also at this for point. a minute not that i don't love all the members of that group but they <laughs> lost their like clear star and main asset of the group wait and hana Yes. Oh, by her staying with Cube. By her like not being part of their group, it, like they yeah. could oh, have no. continued as a group, but there it's was just... no four minute without Hana, of course. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, it's just that would have. Could you imagine if the four, the four that minute actually like, had four them members? Struggle boat without that would, her. That would not. Have I mean, been I would still support them because I love them, but she was such a big appeal yeah. and it factor of that group. But yeah. But no, like um, I think, you know, Beast more or less the members are pretty equally talented across the yeah. board they're, you know they, they're stacked you know granted like <laughs> young son left and that sucks but <laughs> i think they'll be fine without him no no shade to young son um yeah is he is he he's not under cube right he left the company i don't entirely. know if what he's doing Did he never even released anything yet no right? no no i think right now it's still in the early stages yeah. of even figuring out what he's really yeah. doing as a solo artist so right which you know and, maybe and he and Hyuna will like link up again i don't know more troublemaker more i'm always that. here for some troublemaker <laughs> yeah i mean it's just um very interesting yeah you know i think i think you know uh, this move didn't maybe surprise me as much as if i had heard i don't know 
who's another if, if for a minute had been like yeah we're going independence you right. know like I'll, I'll you know that would have been like i would have been like whoa what, about, or like, what if luck. like what if 2 p.m did that um i mean they also have members who write and produce right, right? 2 p.m actually that would not surprise that would not surprise me probably it wouldn't surprise because they also you know huge fan base in japan huge fan base right. in korea that makes sense know. and they also have a few like more assertive personalities yeah. um, and I think Beast also has that like Yosub surprisingly even though he looks like a child <laughs> he is actually very assertive in his mm. in the way he kind of h- does business I feel like yeah, and yeah. he's always been very vocal and you know like Jun Hyung you know you know he doesn't give a shit so um, <laughs> and then <laughs> like and Do Jun's obviously you know the leader and he you know yeah. is he knows what he's doing so I'm, I'm excited I just I need some confirmation, though. I don't know what's yeah. happening right now. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's kind of interesting. You know, it might, I wonder if it'll almost kind of set a precedent for, like, the future. Yeah. You know, like, because I'm assuming, you know, it's not it's not easy to set up your own agency, no, you know, and I everything don't. like that. But, you know, as long as they, you know, I'm sure they've met, they have a lot of business contacts. Right. And, you know, the people who, you know, they'll know the right people to, you know, get the music distributed and right. get them on tour and, you know, make those connections because, right. you know, ultimately the beast brand is still strong, yes. you know, strong enough, certainly that, you know, they'll be able to hold concerts. And, and, you know, I think a lot of Beast fans were also, and I think Beast themselves even were saying, you know, we want to be in Korea more. We want to do mm-hmm. more stuff with our domestic fans. Cause you know, Cube was sending them to Japan a lot. Oh yeah, they were in Japan. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. you know, if anything, this could be just a new era of them being more present and more right. around. And, you know, I'm very kind of curious to see kind of, you know, who links up with them, how right. they link up with them, what it could mean for and their future music. And Jun had an Instagram post that said, <gasps> yes. we're celebrating our seventh anniversary. Yeah. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes yeah. coming up. And I hope everyone is, is going to get used to that. And yeah. that changes phrase that he used yeah. really kind of um, <laughs> gave people, or I guess had people wondering what the group's next moves are. Yeah, for sure. So, um, but so speaking on (laughs) their many number ones and (laughs) well-received projects, what are some of your favorite beast concepts, video songs? It doesn't have to be a single. Me personally. Yeah. I mean, fiction, it will just always kind of be the standard in my opinion. You know, I, I even remember, as like an early K-pop fan, just hearing everyone like, you know, cream their pants over fiction and how like, (laughs) you know, it's this award winning song. Right. And that was the one that got them those big year end awards. Yeah, totally. Like the equivalent of like song of the year and things like that. That was, that was what really solidified them as, you know, an A-list artist. Very much, you know, totally deserved 100%. Mm -hmm. That was a great album. And we talked about this before. It's hard to go through full length albums with K-pop stars or K-pop idols. I mean, but that Uh fact or fiction album was, was incredible. Everything about that. Yeah. It was just so good. I mean, I also loved, um, um, I, I always forget the name of the song. It's the one that they filmed in in New York, and they filmed it. Um, I know something. Is this post beautiful 20... night? Beautiful oh, night. Oh, okay. Shot. I thought it was. Sorry. I was like, is this post twenty thirteen? Because I won't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it was be- uh, beautiful night. I always really like that one. I love shock. It's oh, shock's so good. You know. Speaking of shock, I thought that their second mini album, Shock of the New Era, was their strongest. EP mm. and one of their strongest concepts. I thought they all looked really good styling wise, and I thought the EP was just really solid production wise. And like Shock was, when I first heard it, I was like, what the hell is this? But <laughs> it grows shock, on shock. you. It did really well. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite B songs, if not like probably top two, is Easy. Oh, on that EP, right? Yes, the but I prefer this regular original version over the sincere version. I guess I like the insincere version. Same. Who doesn't? I love find it so strange version. that they call the acoustic version the sincere version. Like what? So sincere. <laughs> so sincere. Yeah. Um. So easy is definitely um one of my favorite songs. I love their um. F- if anybody was enjoyed their first EP. Um, it had like mystery, like mystery, mm. mystery it was like annoyingly catchy. <laughs> um, the song Yet, which was a slow R and B ballad, mm-hmm. which got banned because Chun Hyung said the word shit, Uh-oh. so they banned it. Um, but that was <laughs> a really good song. Um, what else? 
And, you know, I mean, this will be a little maybe after their peak, but I thought they had a really strong 2014 with the 1230, 1230 song. Yeah. And um, and Good Luck was really, really good, okay. too, in my opinion. I think Good Luck was the EP or album that I didn't really get a chance to really get into. Mm. I liked the Time EP. Yeah. thought that was good. That was um, a good year for them. Yeah. It's like their like, R&B ballad sweet spot, I guess. Yeah. Um, ordinary, we did not like. I f- feel like we always kind of s- like skim over that, pretend it didn't really happen. Yeah. Um. Oh my gosh! And don't. Oh wait, is that the um? That was only the EDM song. Oh yes, that Let's was pretend. the Yay one. I think Beast wants to pretend that never happened. That either. was so bad. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I, their first four EPs, like, they were all so consistently solid. Um, lights go on again. That that fourth ep was great i didn't love the styling but that was the Mm. album with beautiful on it and beautiful was just such a freaking bop (laughs) um and i had i like you the most it kind of had that like schoolboy schoolgirl concept where they were in school yeah they had the uniform look um yeah just like nothing too crazy with with the outfits baby beast um (laughs) yeah but yeah i'm just like i just can't believe that to not have them be a part of Cube is just really strange for me to think of. Yeah, because I, mean, I watched their like documentary with. Oh really? Of, they're like essentially making the band <laughs> documentary. It's just, it's hard to separate the two. Yeah, I mean that it, they, you know, more or less, did they not sort of like kind of create? Wait, they came out after Four Minute, or f- oh, sorry, before Four Minute. Before right? Four Minute. Yeah. So Four Minute was actually they debuted. Well, not debuted with them, but they debuted. Um, Kind of concurrently, right? Like, as, like, the sister. Oh, oh, shit. I can't remember. I just remember, like, wasn't one of the Beast members, like, being, like, announcing, you know, on the on the Ha song? Like, wasn't, well, like, giving them ha an intro? Was the, was the second EP. So they're, uh, uh, what am I thinking of? That was the second EP. And, but they had Beast actually be part of the video, the short video for um, the intro track. Yeah. So, so, but their first EP had, like, uh, hot issue music, yeah, right? Hot issue. So now, I'm th- right. now I can't remember because I think that was '09, and they both debuted in '09. So yeah. I really can't remember what month, <laughs> what month, right. uh, four minute debut. But it was around the same time. Yeah. But they didn't really, um, they didn't kind of overlap at all until the second EP where they kind of cross promoted each other. Ah, uh, right, right, right. God, that was so solid. <laughs> that w- um, yeah. for those of you who remember, what's next? The mm-hmm. intro track for, for the huh. EP. Oh yeah. Um, Indicating the where the two of them were together, and then um, and then it took fans into the huh video. Right. God, Uh like I lost my goddamn mind when that came out. (laughs) I was like, lost it. I was like, I watched. I think I watched that video like eighty (laughs) thousand times. No, it's it's totally just that time period, and you know, totally represents Cube and what they were kind of going for and standing yeah. for at the time and now that's completely that was changed just, that was just where the potential was was like mm-hmm. it was there and you you're just like this is um, good things are happening yeah you know and, and it was just ex- an exciting time of right, growth for totally Cube. and now it's just like womp 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 uh, and you know their current roster is not exciting to me yeah. at all so so <laughs> we'll see i don't know i mean as we've said multiple times you know we're very much looking forward to you know where cube goes but it's not looking so bright right now right. but i think a lot of people even thought jyp wasn't going to be so bright for a while and look at them back on oh, top yeah, they're with flourishing got now. seven and twice and you know of course Word. they're classic groups and let us know what your favorite beast tracks yeah. videos concepts send us a top are. three we love it yeah and um but yeah let us know yeah what you think of bees what you think of ladies code what do you think of ioi what do you think of crush all those things are you team jeff or team tino we love hearing yes. all your guys's comments hashtag k-stop yes, don't forget hashtag it k-stop don't forget it as always this has been jeff and this is tina thank you for listening thanks guys bye-bye bye bye